Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. We're continuing our series on the seven modern wonders of the world, Luke, focusing on La Taj Mahal. I like this one. So Thank like we were talking, so we did Petra the other day. Did we post that one? I think did I let, so. Did I let the yeah. cat out of the bag? Yeah, yeah we did no, post we that, one. that one. And that one was good, but I feel like this one was a little better. I like that you said that one was good. New, nor, normally you're like, that one's no, terrible. No, 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 it was all right. Listen. I mean, it was an yeah. Indiana Jones movie. How, yeah, how could it, how could it be bad? This one was a lot better, I would agree. Um, the Taj Mahal, known as the Palace of the Crown or Crown Palace, if you want to be literal. Mm -hmm. Can I... Can I say something before we I get started, James? I want you to. Please say something. No image of the Taj, neither canvas nor on solenoid, can adequately Ooh. express its conceptual imagery, nor convey the legend and poetry and the romance that shrouds what Rabba Natharda Torga calls a teardrop on the teardrop. cheek of time. Time. So I, I just came up with that myself. I could feel it came it from was, the heart. Was, like, <laughs> if you aren't watching us on YouTube, if you're not one of the four people that do that, Luke is welling up right now. Oh, like, I am. He might break down. So I am. I am. I'm going to give you some time to catch and compose yourself. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to start with some history. Is that okay? Please do. So this is the story as I recorded it. Shah, Shah Jahan was a member of the I don't know how you say it, but it sure looks like Muggle dynasty to me. If yeah. anyone's a Harry Potter fan, clearly it's Muggle. Uh, that ruled most of Northern India from the early 16th, to the mid 18th century. After the death of his dad, King Jahangir in 1627, this dude emerged as the victor of a bitter power struggle between his brothers and crowned himself emperor at Agra in 1628. So first off, don't you just like know who's going to be the next boss? It's like, usually the oldest start... one. Usually. That's what I thought. So they're just fighting like, and they're like, nope, I win. I had the biggest sword or something and they won. Um, so at his side was, I apologize to everyone for my pronunciations, was Arjumand Banu Begum, better known as Mumtaz Mahal, chosen one of the palace, whom he had married in 1612. Um, and cherished as the favorite of his three queens. Luke, which of the queens that you live with is your favorite? Wife, uh, daughter, or dog? Remy, the dog, for sure. I figured She's, as much. I literally was just, when we were in between recording, I was just downstairs spooning. Oh, that's so. nice. Perfect. Um, bad news, Luke. In 1631, Mumtaz Mahal died after giving birth to the couple's 14th child. That's that's a lot of child. Well, hold on. So like I, I have to interject here. So please, 14th child. Do. I looked at the list of her kids. Seven of them died before the age of five. Oh, my goodness. How and terrible is that? They started having kids in 1613 and went to 1631. So that means she had 14 kids in 18 years. Like they were busy. Like, whew. My goodness, that's that's, that's, that's exhausting. A, just that is a about. lot of like, oh my goodness. But yeah, half of your kids die. Yeah, that's <sighs> terrible. I mean, oh, I know this is like before like modern medicine and stuff like that, but Probably, like, yeah. that's rough. Um, the grieving Shah 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 Jahan ordered the building of a magnificent mausoleum across the Yamuna River, uh, from which was across from his own royal palace in Agra. So this guy intended to build a second great mausoleum across the river from the Taj Mahal, where his own remains would be buried when he died, which is neat. And the two structures were to be connected by a bridge. And so then these two could be connected for all eternity. Sadly, uh, our Arangzeb, this guy's third son with Mumtaz Mahal, deposed of his ailing father in 1658 and took power for himself. Uh, again, third son, apparently sons one and two weren't interested, got overruled. I don't know. Uh, so Shah Jahan, the guy who made the Taj Mahal or paid for it, whatever, lived out the last eight years of his life, Luke, under house arrest 
in a tower of the red fort at Agra with a view of the majestic resting place that he had constructed for his wife. And he died in 1666 and was buried next to her. He didn't even get his own fancy Taj Mahal Jr. So, so right before, not right before, but while uh, Muntaz was still alive, his, mm-hmm. his, his favorite wife, favorite, yeah. um, while she was still alive, she made him guarantee four promises. First, that he would build the Taj. This. Okay. Second, oh, she wanted this too. She wanted this. So she made him promise this wow. before she died. So first, you got to build this place for me to like be buried. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. seems a little selfish, just saying. I mean, secondly, secondly, uh, that he would marry again. So of course, he's like, uh, yeah. He already got two other wives. And uh, well, he had, a, he had a whole bunch. Hold on, I, I'll oh, get okay. to that. Third, that he would be kind to their children, because apparently whenever you get remarried, like after they would tend to like push the the kids from previous wives out. Makes sense. And fourth is that he would visit the tomb on her death anniversary. So his third, yeah, death anniversary, which is super morbid. So (laughs) his his third son, this jerk, uh, puts him on house arrest and uh prevented him from keeping his last promise he was never allowed to visit her on the death anniversary wow well you know what that almost makes me happy about what i'm going to tell you happened next under this third son's long rule from 1658 to 1707 which doesn't feel all that long to me the mughal empire reached the height of its strengths however his militant Muslim policies, including the destruction of many Hindu temples and shrines, undermined the enduring strength of the empire. And this is what led to its demise by the mid 18th century. So, you know, not long after he was gone uh, from this world. So he brought down the empire that his family had built because he was such a bad person from my understanding. Mm -hmm. So even as the Mughal power crumbled, the Taj Mahal suffered from neglect and disrepair. So like this thing was super mega expensive, right? And it was really expensive for upkeep and to keep it clean and to keep it from crumbling and all of that. And so they weren't really exactly stuffing a lot of monies into it to keep it nice until the 19th century when Lord Curzon the British Viceroy of India ordered a major restoration to the mausoleum and all the parts around it um, because, you know, the colonial or the British had kind of taken over by that point. So then they were like, well, this thing's beautiful. We need to make sure it stays nice. And so they started investing some money into it. And now today, Luke, something like 3 million people a year, I've seen between 3 and 8 million, depending on where I looked, come and visit the Taj Mahal each year. Interesting. So yeah. I have just a little bit about the cat that built it, uh, Shah Around. Jahan. Yeah. Uh, so this was so and I don't know if these were consecutive wives or multiple wives at one time. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming mm-hmm. because they said third wife that they were consecutive. So he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wives after his most favorite wife. How would you like to be like his fourth or fifth or sixth or ninth wife and you don't get a Taj Mahal built for you? Like, it's just like, so your husband is building this amazing structure for his third wife and meanwhile you just get like you're gonna get thrown in some hole in the ground i mean how good she could she have been if he got remarried seven well, more times well that's that's reasonable i guess he had to keep making more babies so there's that uh that being said though um it, it wasn't just for this woman it turns out it was mostly for her and she was in the middle and that was what was most important right but some of his like children i think and favorite servants mm-hmm. and other folks got to be ma- married got to be buried um outside of what we think of as the taj mahal and like some of the other mausoleums and things around there so i mean imagine if you were one of the wives and you didn't get to go there but one of his favorite servants did like that's harsh yeah. that's really harsh um air pollution is a big problem there luke a lot of factories and cars driving by stuff like that so in 1998 the supreme court of india ordered a number of anti-pollution measures to be put in place to protect it from deteriorating a lot of factories were closed around it which 
seems kind of crazy, right? That's that's a big deal. But also vehicle traffic was banned in the like immediate vicinity of the Taj Mahal to try and help with this. So good for them. And it sounds like it's working-ish. So mm -hmm. that's something. Uh, before we move on with any more, unless you have more of the whole story you want to tell. No, no, I think that's it. All right, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. I have to assume that this is tajmahal.gov.in if you want to go visit the Taj Mahal. Is it? It, it, it is not. No. Oh. We don't have a sponsor this week. Uh. Who is it? What is it? UNESCO? I think they should be Una sponsoring this, set, this whole series. They did really you reach should. out to them? I did. Uh, and they didn't get back to us? No, they didn't. Jerks. A shout out, Michael D. Uh, this is kind of a long one. I'm an aerospace design engineer making expensive paper aeroplanes for the government in sunny Scotland. Not England. I know how you colonists love thinking <laughs> it's part of it. So also, let, let's put it out there. Okay, it's not part of England, but it's part of the UK and it's part of Great Britain. But then some of the other places aren't part of book. I, I don't get it. Anyways, my commute to work is filled with the delightful information and witty banter of you two gentlemen. I like this. Of course. This guy. Uh, I have increased my pub knowledge around at least 2%. <laughs> I know you have exhausted all of the engineering backgrounds. If you could be so bold and suggest that you do, or if I could be so bold and suggest you do a piece on the little known topic of civil engineering. <laughs> all jokes aside, have you ever thought of doing a piece on STEM returns, which I don't know what that is. Um, after a career in communications, I returned to university and completed an aerospace degree and becoming a real engineer at the ripe old age of 40. That's mega impressive. Heck yeah. Uh, keep up the great work and the, uh, and if the podcast monies can stretch to international sticker postage, please send me some stickers. Go my dogs. So Heck that was yeah. very nice. Thanks, Michael. Um, that was a good email. Aerospace, that's a good major too. That's a, it's a lot of money, aerospace. My guess is if he's over in the UK, he'll be mad I said that. Yeah. Uh, if, 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 if he's over in Great Britain, uh, my guess is he's like, is, is McDonald's, who's over there aerospace wise? Would that be... Airbus guess, is France, right? I guess, I guess it could be Airbus. It could be um, what's the what's the UK one? I don't uh, know. Do they have Airbus? Ro Ro Rolls Royce. They make the the engines for the engines, for jet. Yeah. yeah, it could be engine. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Um, other shout out in this one. <laughs> this is not really a shout out, but I just found out that my friend has a date with one of the pirate pierogies. You know that run around the field. Oh my goodness gracious! Yeah. So I'm really excited for her. She doesn't listen, I'm sure, but her brother does. So brother, I'm not gonna say your name. I don't know how that we do with that. Don't, don't tell her I'm giving her shout outs because what, this is really funny. What do you think like listeners learn from Pitt Pittsburgh are thinking when you said that this person has a date with a pirate pierogi? <laughs> like, I, I don't even I know. I wonder what's running through uh, their minds right now. I don't, probably the pierogi's running the it, race. It sounds I like love true the love. the pierogi race. It's the sounds only like, good thing about a pirate game. It is the only good thing. It sounds I, like true love. I agree. By the time this goes live, the date will have happened. Whatever resulting relationship has happened will have fizzled out. So it's not really a big deal, but I'm really excited for her. That's pretty cool. All right. If any of you want to talk about the Pittsburgh Pirate pierogies and the pierogi race, uh, if you had dates with a pierogi or anything interesting like that, go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share. We love the reviews. And as always, you can tell your smart devices to play the Unprofessional Engineering Podcast anytime. And be sure to stop by the Unprofessional Engineering store and pick up some swag because you'll be waiting forever if you're asking James for stickers. One more. Ow. Um, true. One more shout out real quick. Her brother is an official hot dog ambassador. What does that I even mean? Know. I love what? it. This I family's fascinating. I think I'm going to quit my job. I know. And it I want to be amazing. a hot dog ambassador. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but I'm going to find out. Um, all right. Back to the Taj Mahal, which is far less interesting. It is far less interesting. So uh, I'd like to do just me. a high level timeline because oh, you I talked about some history, but I, I think knowing some dates. Um, so you talked about like uh, 1628, uh, Shah Jahan becomes the emperor. Uh, his wife, uh, Mutza dies in 1631. A year later, he starts uh, 1632. He starts the beginning of the Taj Mahal. It takes an estimated 20,000 workers 
uh, to build the structure. Uh, the main mausoleum, so the main, the, the white mausoleum that's super famous in all the pictures, there's all kinds of outbuildings, but the main one is finished in 1648. That seems pretty fast. I mean, considering, yeah. you know, like the way they were, had to move things and the equipment and access they had, but like in, in what is that, uh, 10, 16 years, they built the main mausoleum. Um, the additional features in some of the outbuildings, including the mosque and the guest houses and the courtyards, were completed in 1653. Uh, uh, 1666, you talked about it, uh, Shah Jahan dies. His son, who was a jerk, is nice enough to put his remains next to his, his favorite wife. So that was, I guess, kind of nice of him. Um, kind of. In 1861, uh, the Archaeological Survey of India, the ASI, uh, is ordered to help preserve and restore. You talked about um, Lord Kervan in uh, 1899, the Viceroy to India. They start fixing it. Nine, all, and it takes all the way until 1983 uh, before it's designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. And then in... 2007, the Taj Mahal is named one of the seven new wonders of the world as part of an online marketing campaign. And it just seems weird that to become a wonder of the world, you just have to have a good marketing team yeah. <laughs> because it just goes by votes, right? Like it, it could be like anything. You just got to get enough votes and it becomes a seven wonder of the world. We could push to have like our houses be like Pittsburgh wonders of the city or yeah, something. My my that my rental's good. falling apart. It's not a wonder of the world, that's for sure. That's a wonder how it's still standing. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a wonder. Uh, so let's talk about how this thing was built and some of the details. Does that sound reasonable to you, James? I I would enjoy that. Ooh, first, can I say what it looks like? Please. It's kind of interesting. So it has four nearly identical. Uh, facades it is identical um, it's perfectly symmetrical as a matter of fact right down the center that's well i mean you can't say it's identical eh, but close nearly. enough um they have wide central arches rising 108 feet or 33 meters for you other folks that use that system um at its apex and is chamfered corners uh the majestic central dome which i think we probably all know reaches a height of 240 feet uh at the tip at, at its very tip um, and then it's surrounded by four lesser, lesser domes. And I have a fun fact about the lesser domes that we can cover later on. This is really weird. The acoustics inside the main dome, Luke, uh, cause the single note of a flute to reverberate five times. Why anyone knows that or why that's a thing is beyond me, but I who's, like it. Who's cruising through the Taj Mahal with a flute playing a single note to figure that's, that out? That's what I want to know. Uh, the interior of the mausoleum is organized around an octagonal, 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 octagonal uh, marble chamber um with low relief carvings and semi-precious stones um whenever we look at the pictures of it it's awesome it's beautiful but really when you get up close all the carvings and all the inlaid stones and stuff are so intricate it's really amazing um and in that area surrounded by the precious stones and all that um is the cenotaph is that right cenotaphs Nailed of, it. yeah of the two folks that are there those false tombs, apparently that's what those are, are enclosed by a finely wrought filigree marble screen. And beneath the tombs at garden level is actually where the true sarcophagi lie. Um, and they stand gracefully apart from the central building um, at each of the four corners of the square pilf are elegant miniaturettes everywhere. So I think you have to go there to really understand the beauty of it with all of the carvings and stuff but just looking at pictures as well really kind of crazy okay it is. go ahead luke so the building of it so the taj mahal you mentioned is located in agra uh in india it's on 17 hectares or 42 acres for those of you who don't know what a hectare is who doesn't know um, that on the banks of the the Yuma River. So when they started the construction, they had to raise the level of where they were building it because it was it was it had to be above river level for flooding reasons and whatnot. You look like you're going to say like something. 50 meters or something absurd. Yeah, so they brought in like a ridiculous amount of fill. And if you think how they had to build foundations back then, they essentially dug like wells and they would fill them with rock and stone to build the foundation for the original structure. 
that structure, the center structure, is made entirely uh, out of marble. So the actual mausoleum itself, but then the rest of the buildings, it's a lot of veneers. So they would, um, you know, put like, you know, regular stonework and then they would veneer it with marble or whatever they were working on. The cool thing about the, uh, the building was typically when they would build buildings, you'd make like a bamboo uh, structure for scaffolding on the outside. Yeah. But with this one, they actually essentially enclosed it in brick scaffolding so they built a building essentially around it as they were building it scaffolding wise uh, and then whenever they were done they actually took it apart brick by brick and apparently the story goes they told all the workers you could just take the bricks home and use them for whatever you want them to so apparently a scaffolding oh. came down like after they were done like super this, fast this, super fast because they were oh. reusing it for their own homes or whatever that's they were a doing. good trick right there it's a very good trick um so the uh the building is estimated to have cost back in the day uh 227 million dollars if you had to like do oh, it i saw in, 827 that's exactly what I didn't say and was looking at. What did I say? Yeah, 820. You know that I'm dyslexic, you jerk. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. $827 million is the equivalent in modern day cash if you had to do that. Uh, they said it took over a thousand elephants that would I carry that. material. And I love they're using elephant as transport right? from all over Asia. And when you think about the things that they were using, so they said that a lot of the marble came from uh, Agra. It was super prevalent there. But some of the precious stones and materials you talk about, they're just not there. So things like jade uh, came from China. Turquoise came from Tibet. Sapphire came from Sri Lanka. Jasper uh, and Sri Lanka. Uh, Carillion came from Punjab and Arabia. So like there's all these super precious metals, like all the colored uh, materials you see and all the filigree you mentioned is is inlaid um, precious stones, which is crazy. Have you so, ever used the word filigree before today? Uh, I think I have used the word filigree. I, I don't know why. I saw something that was interesting to me, Luke, is that it said that only 40 names of the 20,000 workers are known today and i was like that was a long time ago knowing 40 of the names seems that's pretty, pretty good solid. yeah all right continue on uh so they used pulley systems and they used yeah. mules and oxen so th so this is a long time ago but this isn't like like stone age so it's actually not surprising that they know how to use you know like horsepower or mule power or oxen power sure uh, so they use these in pulley systems and, and levers to actually lift uh, the, the white marble, translucent white marble stones and other materials um, into place. Um, the, the other thing that was really interesting is that most of the, uh, where was it at? Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so the actual... Yeah, the gardens and additional buildings is on a rectangular plot of land. So the actual, so not the whole acre, that that 46 acre area, but the, the building itself is 1,000 feet by 1,860 feet. Um, and let's see, what else do we got? Uh, I have a good one. I have a good one. Shoot. So after the foundation was dug and excavated and they like packed it with like logs and dirt and stuff, like because of the water issues. After that was done, they built a 15 kilometer long ramp made of dirt and earth um, to allow easy transportation of materials up to the project. A 15 kilometer, like a 10 mile long ramp. Like that is crazy that people could roll stuff up or move stuff up or elephants can pull mm -hmm. stuff up. That blows my mind. That seems like a project in itself. Before we continue, Luke, we need to take another break for this week's luke's rant and i'm actually handing my rant back over to you james you said you had something that you needed to get off your chest i think yeah, is what i feel you said. like i must be extra salty today so i apologize you definitely extra salty i get so excited when i see emails that i neglect for a long time but like today we got well i guess technically yesterday we got five emails yesterday two of them were from fans saying oh my gosh i love your show so much of course i don't blame them thank That's you for writing it i love it another three of them went something like dear sir or mrs i have a ceo of fill in the blank company that would be a great guest for your show or hey i loved x episode 
fill in the blank that they saw the name of. I have a great guest who knows all about AI and it's totally unrelated, but that they'd be a great guest or I need some help selling my book and I'd be a great <laughs> guest for your show. I'm sure you would all be great guests for our show and nobody wants to hear about what you want to talk about, but there are things that you could do like pay us to have spot on our show to talk for 30 minutes about your company or whatever. Once you say that, Luke, nobody's that interested in coming yeah. on anymore. Yeah, yeah, they just yeah. want thousands and thousands and thousands of people to hear about their stuff for free. Exactly. I get it. I love your company that you're starting up as much as you do, I swear. And your book that, you know, your seven readers are going to then be able to hear our podcast about. But like, you pony up the cash monies. Are you Neil yeah. deGrasse Tyson? No, then I'm not going to put you on for free. Did you win a Nobel Prize? No, then you're not going to come on for free. So you got to think about it. We have had Nobel Prize winners on I the know. show. I know. That's what I'm I mean, saying. You, you don't know. have to pay. That's the rule. Win a Nobel Prize or something of and the we'll sort. And we'll have you on for free. We'll have you on for free. So next time you all want to write in, unless you want to pay me because we're broke and I can't afford to host our website anymore, you know, just think about that when you're asking for our time. Okay, oh. that's my rant. Whew, that was salty. <sighs> Sorry. All righty, James. Let's say you want to go visit the Taj Mahal. I would love to. So like I said, you want to go to tajmahal.gov.in and they give you all this information about how to visit. Apparently, there's a giant complex over there, and there's other places to go see, like other you know mausoleums and You're buildings and stuff like that. You're telling me that the Taj Mahal is not the only thing in India. Exactly. It's wow. a very large... India in, in and of itself revelation. is a very large continent country. Continent. Uh, uh, <laughs> So oh, goodness. here's so it's interesting. So if you are from India, if you are a native of India, it's going to cost you 50. I don't know what the currency is. I think it's rupees. I rupees. Think. It's going to cost you 50 rupees. If you are a foreigner, you and I, it's going to cost you 1100 rupees. So I'm like losing my mind. Like, how is that fair? I did the conversion on currency. If you're from India, it's 63 cents to go. If you're not from India and you're a foreigner, it costs you $13.70 to attend and, and go and see the Taj Mahal. They're not open on Fridays. Oh, um, interesting. <laughs> in case you're interested. Um, but just, you know. And they also <laughs> highly recommend you go with, it, it, it's interesting. You know, I imagine that a lot of these websites they're they're catering them towards like English speakers and and people that are touring. Uh, but they say they highly recommend that you use a reputable tour guide who show who wears and shows his badge. So apparently, oh, like fair. apparently, there's like some unscrupulous tour guides that don't wear and show their badges that might you know not be as good. I had a friend uh, offer to be my tour guide when I go over, so. Oh, he says he's done it many times for other folks. So I'm going to take him up on that if I ever get How over. How nice there. is that? Yeah. A uh, fun fact for you, Luke. Shoot. Paintings of animals or humans was forbidden in Islamic traditions. So floral patterns were used most of the time, um, as well as calligraphy being used as a workaround to these different rules. I thought that was kind of interesting. So no animals or people pictures in in the Taj Mahal. Really? That's, that's what I heard. I mean, I haven't been there, so I can't tell you. Okay. Uh, so a, a couple of things to, to think about whenever you're going to the Taj Mahal is the, the type of architecture that was used or the, the name of the architecture. It's actual, it's, it's described as, what is it? Indo... Indo-Islamic, obviously. Yeah, it, it... Don't you know anything? <laughs> I couldn't scroll fast enough. I was I was going to say Indo Islamic. It's a style that combines uh, Hindu art, traditional to that territory, and Islamic. Wow, you're just a plethora. Well, of... I know a lot about architecture. <laughs> you know, Could you tell me? me a little bit about the elements that go into uh, Indo -Is Islamic architecture? I don't want to take it all away from you. Please go ahead. Well, it's all about uniformity of shape. It is uh, that. It, it's very about uniformity of shape. Um, 
That's the only, <laughs> that's the only thing I wrote Thanks. down. Thanks, Luke. Um, <laughs> I have fun facts. Can I talk about some of them? Please do. And then I have some. Do we want to do the negative stuff first, and then we can finish with fun There's facts? There's negative stuff? I saw nothing yeah. negative. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So apparently, like you talked about the, the, so it is a UNESCO site, and then you talked about some of these, you know, factories were shutting down. Apparently, it just isn't enough. Like the the, the city oh, of the city yeah. of Agra is apparently... You know, and I saw some recent videos. You think it's Agra or Agra? I think I think they say Agra. Actually, yeah, the city That's of the, Agra. The, the Merkin way of saying yeah. it's Agra. Um, and I saw like some recent like TripAdvisor like reviews of mm. like when people visit, and apparently it is just filthy. Like oh really? Like, like the river Aww. itself is just polluted oh, well, yeah. with like water bottles and 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 garbage. Um, and the the problem is there's there's so much like garbage they say it attracts bugs the bugs then you know multiply and apparently it's super buggy and then these bugs then go into and die in and around the taj mahal building itself and they say that the building is supposed to be this this translucent white it's actually more like this yellow brown color and it's all of just the smog and the bugs and the garbage and the it's actually agra is actually one of the eighth most polluted cities in the world um which I, it can't be good for a, a brand new white Taj Mahal translucent marble probably, building. Probably not. So no. apparently, like when you see pictures online of the Taj Mahal, these are pictures back from like the 80s and, you know, way back. Like when you saw the, the Princess Diana pictures you see of her there when she went like and it's beautiful white. Like if you guys saw a picture of it nowadays, it's kind of like it looks like smoker's teeth. It's like a stained mm. yellow brown kind of color. So. Huh. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah, it is a little bit, and and it's it, like it, it's it. unfortunate. Oh, I would definitely love to see it. What? Um, okay, hear me out. Wasn't the one on the flip side that was supposed to be built be wasn't it supposed to be black? It was supposed to be black. Yes. Maybe they just let this go, and eventually that one will become his vision. <laughs> I mean, eventually it will. So. Uh, fun fact for you, Luke: the placement of the Taj Mahal's four min minarets, the the spire, spires. Yep, the you got towers, it. You nailed it. Minaret, 100, you're right. 130 foot talls on the edge of the platforms was not an aesthetic choice, but more of a strategic one. In the 17th century, it wasn't uncommon for massive architectural ventures such as this one to fall victim to their own weight. To protect the crypt, uh, the chief architect, Ustad Ahmad Lauri, uh, tilted the tower slightly, ever so slightly, so that they would fall away from the rest of the Taj Mahal, preventing the grave from getting smacked by them. That's, I thought that seems smart. Another fun fact, Luke, this is my favorite fun fact, I think. The Taj Mahal's status as an Indian icon has made it very vulnerable during international hostilities, things such as World War II, war connection, um, and you know other wars like between India and Pakistan and things like that throughout the 20th century. The Indian government and people have gone to super big lengths to try and protect the Taj Mahal, right? To this end, architects added extensive scaffolding that could concealed the structure from airborne bombers. So this That's was actually, cool. yeah, this worked pretty well. So instead of seeing the Taj Mahal below you that you're going to drop a bomb on, pilots would see basically a giant pile of bamboo and be like, eh, not going to blow that thing up. Who needs bamboo blown up? That's interesting. I, I thought so as well. Do you have many fun facts that you wanted to share? Uh, I, I don't have much. Uh, we kind of covered a lot of it. Um, um, I'll tell you that we said everything lies on a perfect line, right? It's perfectly yes. symmetric, except for uh, where old, uh, well, I guess Mumtaz Mahal's casket uh, is right in the center. But then when they dumped the husband there, the guy who built it, uh, that was off center. So he's a little west of center in his resting place. So threw off the whole dynamic. The Taj Mahal is the 139th tallest dome in the world. That seems a, it's not super impressive. <laughs> it's it's not it's it's not impressive really at all. Its GPS coordinates, if you're interested, are 27, 10, 30 north. I'm and not interested. Please. 78, 02, 31 east. In case you wanted to plug it into your GPS and take a walk or a ride there. Yeah. Um. One more that I have. I thought there were two that I wanted, but one more. Uh. The rumor that 
Shah Jahan wanted the Taj Mahal to be uncopyable. And so he had the artisan's hands cut off to ensure that they could never replicate this My feat goodness. ever again is thought just to be a myth. There's no proof to support these claims. And it appears actually that the workers were not only paid well, but they were also very respected for their various skill sets that they had while building it. And like you said, you know, go take the bricks home and things like that. So it seems like they were actually taken care of, but nasty rumors of hand chopping off did go about. So there's a Taj Mahal, Bangladesh. It's actually a full scale replica of the no actual Taj Mahal. So they replicated this, I'm assuming in Bangladesh, because it's called Taj Mahal, Bangladesh. That, that does seem to make sense. I think we have an office there. We should go. That would be interesting. Uh, yeah. Some notable people that have visited, Dwight Eisenhower, Barack Obama, Vladimir Putin, hey, bad guy, uh, and, Princess, and Princess Diana. Bringing politics into it today, are we? And then, um, and then, uh, oh, Princess Di was there. Yeah, yeah Princess Di was there. And then, uh, Chili Billy Clinton uh, was quoted as saying, so "There are two. Clearly. There are two types of people: people that have visited the Taj Mahal and love it, and people that have not visited the Taj Mahal and love it." Oh well, that's a See? lovely statement. Yeah, I like that. Very nice. Um, anything else you want to throw out there? Luke? That's all I got. That's all you got. Well, that is all I got as well. If any of you want to talk about the Taj Mahal, if you want to suggest the Nate, Nate, the next great wonder of the world that we should be covering, if you just want to tell us how poorly we pronounced words, anything like that, go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And until next time, see ya.